In the last example, we are going to see how to calculate matrix effect based on calibration graph slopes. So here we have an example of anti-carb analysis in tomato. And the aim is here to give the matrix effect uh, value over several concentrations, not only on one concentration level as was previously done in, in the previous examples for metacarb sulfoxa. So to give the matrix effect value on different con over different concentrations, we need to have data on different concentrations. And one possibility would be to average to obtain matrix effects over different concentrations, but another possibility is to use the calibration graphs that are conducted, one in solvent and the other in the mm, extracts of blank, on, uh, blank matrix. And, and to use this calibration graph slopes for the calculations. Uh, compared to calculating matrix effect on each concentration, uh, this approach does not allow us to see if matrix effect actually changes with concentration, but it is very convenient and it allows averaging over several concentration levels. So here for this example we have uh, two data sets. One data set is the analyte signals, the peak areas in solvents, uh, in solvent on five concentration levels. And we have also at the same concentration levels analyte signals in the blank tomato extract spiked after the extraction, exactly like was in the previous examples. So now to calculate matrix effect, we need to obtain the slopes. To do this, we have to set up two calibration functions, one in the matrix and the other in the solvent. So let's start with setting up the calibration function in the matrix. We are going to use the Linus function, exactly like is done usually for calibration functions. So we begin with the matrix. Matrix so this is the matrix calibration function. So we here have the slope and the intercept, the R square, um, the residual standard deviation and all the other data. So the slope, the intercept. And before we move on, we immediately should assess the intercept, if it's important in the calibration function or not. And here we can also see that the two times the intercept standard deviation is definitely larger than the intercept absolute value. And sure, therefore, we should use the calibration function that only contains the slope and not the intercept. Uh, also, we need to obtain the calibration function in the solvent. And we are going to do this exactly in the same way with using the Linus function. And here again, similarly, when we look at the intercept, when we look at the intercept, we can see that the standard deviation of the intercept is larger than the intercept itself, and therefore sh we should use the model that does not contain intercept, so a simpler model. So now we have two calibration functions one in the matrix and one in the solvent and we have the slopes for both and now we can directly apply this matrix effect calculation mode so to get the matrix effect we need to divide the matrix effect, uh, the matrix spiked um, samples, the calibration function that has been obtained from matrix uh, 
from spiked matrix samples and divide it with the calibration function that we have obtained from solvent and now when we multiply this with 100% we can see what the matrix effect value is and it turns out that in this case the matrix effect value is 124% meaning that uh, at the moment in this concentration range the ionization enhancement occurs and we can also actually control this calculation correctness or this value correctness when we look at the data themselves and as the spikings for obtaining these two calibration functions have been carried out on exactly the same concentration levels, we can pairwise compare the peak areas that have been obtained for 0.04 mg per kilogram for solvent and for matrix and for 0.1 mg per kilogram and so on. And actually we can already, by visually looking at the data, see that the signals that have been obtained in the matrix are higher than the ones that have been obtained in solvent. So this means that um, our example really shows uh, ionization enhancement or actually there could be also other reasons for a higher matrix effect. For example, one of the reasons could be a coluting uh, compound that has exactly the same MSMS transition as aldicarb does, or that we really have a coluting matrix compound that increases our ionization efficiency of our compound. However, similarly to matrix uh, effects that are below 100% referring to ionization suppression, also, matrix effect um, is above 100% meaning ionization enhancement are not very good for our method. Uh, first of all, because small variations in matrix may change the matrix effect and uh, therefore this matrix effect may be strongly variable. And to have a really robust method, we, need, we would like to have the matrix effect values as close as possible to 100%.